Good afternoon everyone and welcome to our fifth studio here in Fife on the Fife Coastal Trail. Uh, I hope I'm live now, I have no way of knowing but I'm hoping I'm chatting to some lovely people out there. And uh, I'm Wendy Ballery, I publish Scottish Food Guide and Scottish Cheese Trail and uh, we run lovely workshops here in our studio and at the moment we're doing it for family bubbles and I must be on time because that's the cuckoo clock so <laughs> <laughs> that must be on the hour now so if you've just logged in welcome and although we're in Fife today we're actually going to take a little virtual trip up to the Shetlands uh, one of our beloved spots one of our many beloved spots and when I saw the suggested foods that we did to celebrate on Scottish Food Fortnight I spotted David's salt cod and I thought that would be great fun to do because it's not something that everybody thinks about doing every day and there might be some of you out there that haven't used it before. So I thought it'd be really nice to feature something a little bit different. So here's the packaging and it's as light as a feather so it's very easy to get posted uh, which is another plus. Fish is so perishable normally and we have great fishmongers to support but David has brought back something that is an absolute heritage food that has been for since 900 AD um, Scotland has been famous for its wonderful ear dried fish and we have um, this particular fish um, he does it with cod, it's also famous done with ling, is um, the air dried salted fish and look at it, it's absolutely hard, <laughs> keeps, keeps for years like that but it's fantastic, a great way to dry a perishable product and uh, way way back in the day, in the distant past, it was the Shetlanders that were renowned for their, for their boat building, for their strength and they were out on these high seas, very alien conditions. And once they were out there, they would harvest a lot of cod, as I say, also sometimes ling, and they would um, have to salt it on the boat and then bring it ashore and air dry it. And if you've ever been to Shetland, trust me, I have seen schoolgirls hanging on to lampposts waiting for the school bus run in the morning. It's windy. <laughs> so these are very light to pack. They stay like that for ever and then when you're ready to use them um, then you start hydrating them and treating them like a fresh fish so it's a great store cupboard essential and at the moment um, since Covid David has been collaborating with local fish shops and they do online other Shetland fish as well so that's something to think about when you're placing your order so mail order on the website click easy so what do you do with these wonderful beasties well the first thing you do is you run them under the cold tap to dislodge any loose salt and then once you've done that place them in a bowl sufficiently big that you can cover them with cold water and they need to have cold water to take some of the excess salt out for 48 hours so it's not something you're going to be able to cook along with Wendy today but something for you to enjoy over the weekend or at any time and when you have it in the water for 48 hours refresh it so rinse off that water and put in more cold tap water and I would do that about over three times over the course of a day but you don't have to get up in the middle of the night to do it it'll be fine overnight but do that for a couple of days and then you have got lovely hydrated cod fillets then what you do is you um, poach them just in water for about 15 minutes until they flake easily with a fork like you would with any fish and then you have your ingredient to do whatever you like with it makes a great patty, your granddad, and indeed David himself does one ready to use and you can buy it in pots. It makes a great foundation to a fish pie. And what we're doing today is a very, very traditional Shetland dish, baking it with potatoes. Now you can use whatever potatoes you have to hand. A nice floury potato is very good for this. Um, avoid all these white potatoes in supermarkets, go for a nice heritage potato. And we've been growing for Shetland blacks. So that couldn't be more appropriate for our Shetland pie. Um, we've even got one here that is a beautiful heart shape. How cool is that? Very cute little Shetland black. But you can see the colour of these is wonderful. And when you boil these, um, some of that colour will be lost. But if you do baked potato wedges um, or roast them, or as we're doing, baking them, you will keep that lovely colour. They're a little bit flowery. They've got a wonderful flavour. And you can get the seed potato from Andrew Ski, the potato house up at Ochter House and that's where we got our heritage potatoes from 
And this here we're growing the Shetland Black, Edsel Blue, Aaron Victory, uh, Highland Burgundy Red. Um, so a, a lovely selection and they all have their own colours and flavours and characters. So as part of Scottish Food Fortnight for next year, just be organised, get your potatoes implanted and you can be harvesting your own potatoes. So that's the Shetland Black. Other ingredients we have here, a couple of bay leaves from our garden, a lemon that doesn't grow here, and I've also got some leeks. Now these aren't any old leeks and for this recipe you could use um, onions, you could use chives. If you're using just a boring onion, I would soften it first in butter. But you don't need to bother with the leeks because they need less cooking and they'll keep their lovely green. Now these are Musselboro leeks and they're quite small still but they're lovely. Uh, we thin them and we use them as you would spring onions and uh, the Musselboro leek is on the Slow Food International Arc of Taste as are the Shetland potatoes and uh, you can buy seed packets. You won't be able to buy a Musselboro leek but you can plant them and they certainly love it in Fife so I think they're quite easy to grow. So that is another ingredient, a little bit of really good butter and some black pepper. Funnily enough, this is not a recipe that needs any salt. So <laughs> we have a sufficient salt without adding any more. Um, but if you, if you particularly like it salty, you can add a little bit more at the table. So that's what we've got here in front of us. And uh, here we've got, I've started this already. Now this is um, half the packet and I've already done a blue peter here, some I did earlier. So this has got half the packet of the cod in it, one of the fish. So I've already started building the layers and you can see the lovely Shetland black potato there. Um, there's the odd one that's whiter, which was a, a smuggled in Edsel blue in the, in the bucket my husband gave me this morning. So there's the odd one that's not the right color, but it'll still be delicious. And so I'm going to continue to build up the layers and uh, they'll settle they'll settle down in the, in the dish here. So I've got some some more of the, the cod here and it's flaked and cooked and ready to go. So I'm going to spread out the final layer of cod in amongst the potato. Add some knobs of butter. Yes, just in case any of you are sharp-eyed, there is fish on this butter knife now, but I won't use this butter for anything else. This will be for my fish pie. One goes the butter, nice little buttery layer goes rather nicely. And also on with some more of our muscle bro leeks. On they go. And we've got a final layer of potato to go and a mix of double cream and whole milk. Now the cream is very important, that lovely, healthy, good fattiness works to give us a lovely rich sauce and merges the potatoes and the cod in a delightful way. It's really delicious. And just a bit more black pepper on the top. And last but not least, we'll do a layer of potato and also some of a mix. I've got 50-50 double cream and whole milk. So just pour it slowly so it'll fill up all the... I did it as I went along, knobs of butter, muscle bro leek. There we are. And then you can, oops, you can get a little bit tidy on the top and lay out your final layer of potatoes because you want the potatoes on the top so that the, the cod stays lovely and moist and succulent underneath. So this can actually be made in advance. You can freeze it and bring it out um, so that you don't have to be making it on the day. It's equally delicious. Um, the amount of cream and milk, I suggest, can be um, altered a little bit because it'll depend on the container you're using, if it's a deep container or if you're doing a bigger quantity. So you will just have to keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't dry out. Put another layer on. Have a little stowaway Edsel Blue there. But these colours will keep and they really are delicious. And of course you can serve this with a salad or with a lovely um, hot vegetable. We've got chard in the garden just now. You could do it with Shetland Kale, another lovely island product. Um, I do sometimes envy the islands because they have that opportunity to keep their indigenous breeds and varieties 
more easily than sometimes we do on the mainland. We have some wonderful, wonderful ingredients on the mainland. Um, but uh, I often think it's a bit like these castles, you know, castles can stay very more intact on an island, whereas on the mainland they can rifle the stones for other things. Um, classic example is the Colonsey honey, where the bees on Colonsey can be the native black bees, but they don't get compromised by mainland bees. So it's, it's quite interesting the way that happens. And um, put a couple of your bay leaves in there underneath, as I did. And the, the lemon is for garnish, as is some chives. Now you'll see I've cut the Shetland black potatoes quite thin. I've used the mandolin, but you don't have to. But you might need to give it slightly longer cooking if they're thicker chunks. So either way is absolutely fine. This is a homespun recipe. It's not particularly chefy, but this is about the flavours, not about whether it's um, sitting in a minimalistic setting. This is, <laughs> this is all about flavours, and today it's all about Shetland flavours. Also on Shetland, you get the Shetland Kai from Uradale Farm, the Shetland native Shetland sheep from Uradale and from Richard Briggs, um, and there are some really, really rare ducks and hens, which you won't be able to get for the table, but where there are very committed people really keeping these breeds going on Shetland. So it's a, a, the islands and indeed all of Scotland, there's full of places to cherish and things to enjoy tasting and things to help support. It is so important to shop local. And that is what my, my Scottish food guide is all about, really dedicated to local produce. Um, so I'm taking this moment at Scottish Food Fortnight very appropriately to hammer home to you while I'm on the soapbox how important it is to support our native breeds, our native varietals and the lovely people that produce them and the farm shops. And indeed after going live to see it this afternoon, we're heading off to our Dross farm shop to get some goodies from there. So here we are, this is it, ready to go in the oven. And we'll get out the one that's nice and hot here. This is a log stove that we cook on that I adore. I, I do have a boring electric one as well, but I do enjoy cooking on the log stove because it works so well. Now I'll just move this one over so that we can get a better view of it in the middle here. And you can see it's got a lovely toasted finish here where the cream has been bubbling up and with a bit of chives to finish it off and the Shetland black potatoes have still kept their lovely flavour and their lovely colour and it's got a great smell. Oh, I'm feeling quite peckish now. I think it was a good time to do this at lunchtime because we get to eat it after you've seen it. So if you're looking for the recipe, I believe it's on the Scotland um, Food and Drink website. And uh, I confess I haven't put it up on mine yet, but it will be before we go to our dross. So the recipe will be there too. It would be a bit embarrassing at this moment if it slid straight off onto the floor. So I'll just put that there for a minute. And there you can see the finished Shetland potato bake with the air dried Shetland cod and Andrew Ski's Shetland black potatoes and some goodies from our garden. So I hope you've all, oh, there's the cream, it's looking really delicious and moist. So I hope you've enjoyed this and our contribution to Scottish Food Fortnight. But remember, it's uh, like a puppy for Christmas. It's not just the Scottish Food Fortnight that you eat Scottish produce. You do it 52 weeks of the year. And I haven't been able to answer any questions that may have come in, but I will be absolutely delighted to answer any questions either via my Scottish Food Guide website or via my Instagram account when I log back in. So any questions at all, don't hesitate. It's always lovely to hear from you. Thank you. Bye.